Hey free to play gang, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to take a look at the rare Esper Chalmers. I'm sure a lot of you guys have multiple copies of him. Some of you might even be able to fully resonate him by now. So let's figure out whether is he useful, right? So I'm gonna cover like a few of the main content where I find that he's very relevant in. And I'll explain a little bit more about why he's not so relevant in some other content. Now, he's definitely not gonna be relevant in Fafnir, that's for sure, because his single target hits on most of his skills, except for his second skill, which is just a two hit. So that is very easy to explain. But before we move on to the, you know, the rest of the content, let's take a look at his skills as always. So here is his first skill, Gold Ray. Deals damage to a target equal to 120% of attack, plus an extra 3% of the target's max HP, which is capped by 100% of his attack. So he definitely needs a lot of attack power in order to scale more according to the enemy's max HP. Now, this attack also consumes 5% of his current HP. Now, moving on to Vita Light Beam. Attacks an enemy twice, each dealing damage equal to 75% of attack, with a 60% chance of inflicting disease for two turns. Now, if the target's HP ceiling is higher than yours, then each strike deals extra damage equal to 3% of the target's max HP, and this attack is also capped up to 100% of his attack, but this hits twice, so each of the attacks actually has an additional 100% of his attack. So that's actually a lot of damage. So essentially this skill, if you're hitting someone with more max HP than you, which is probably going to be every single other Esper in the game, you're going to be dealing 175% of your attack times 2. Now moving on to his third skill, this is Gold Pulse. Deals damage to a target equal to 120% of his attack, plus an extra 10% of the target's max HP at the cost of 40% of your current HP. So the amount of the extra damage cannot exceed 300% of your attack. So essentially, this skill does a total of 420% attack. This is extremely powerful. And this is probably, but, but don't take my word for it, but this is probably the most powerful skill in the game right now. And of course, this attack also inflicts buff blocker for two turns, but that is, it is a nice thing, but it's not really his main selling point, right? His main selling point is the damage that he can do to bosses or enemies with a lot of HP. So we're going to take a look at content that covers exactly this. Now, he also has a captain ability or leader buff that increases all allies' attack by 18%, which is pretty useful, especially if you're running a team that, you know, you're lacking the attack lead or like, for example, you're not running a sender and all that. That's still possible. You can use his leader buff over here, which can be quite useful. All right, so let's take a look at his relics. Now, you already understand that he is capped by his attack power. So that means that the more attack he has, the more damage he can do, right? So essentially, the probably the, the main kit that you're going to run him with is always going to be War Machine. Now, War Machine has 30% extra attack bonus, which is what's going to give him that huge attack power increase. But of course, if you're approaching, you know, the end game and all that, and you're able to acquire a lot more attack percentage stats on your relics, right? Then you can definitely opt for something like a Thor set. I think Thor set can be a little bit more powerful because it gives you a little bit more stat than like, let's say, War Machine. So his damage definitely scales off crit damage. So it's highly recommended that you build him with like crit damage, attack, attack, and give him a whole ton of attack and crit damage. So that's how you can extend his DPS as much as possible. So let's quickly finish this off by looking at his ascensions. So he has attack over here, defense, attack percentage plus 10%, HP plus 10%, which is not necessary, and then attack plus 20% over here. And obviously the way you want to resonate him is to just push all of his attack power. So that's why he has 24% attack. So the first place that he finds a lot of use is going to be Kronos, that's for sure. So the first two waves, he's just chilling, okay? He's just not gonna do anything. He's just gonna take the back seat and wait for the other Espers to clear the wave like this. And the reason is very simple. He needs to reserve his ultimate, his third skill for the boss. So let's take a look at how powerful his third skill can be. Well, so long as all of our debuffs land, right? So for example, our defense break needs to land and our seal debuff needs to land as well. And when both of these are done, he's going to be able to do a lot of damage. So we got both of those and we did 147,000 damage. This is not the maximum that I've actually seen. So if you watch Death Punk's videos, his Chalmers actually did upwards of 150 something thousand damage. And to be honest, my stats are not even that good, which means that his potential is a lot higher. Now, I do think that he is potentially quite useful in a pep as well, but the issue is it is extremely hard to juggle the first two wave clearing to reserve his third skill on a pep without needing to compensate with, you know, either a Jacob or a Suhua or any other attack buffers. Now, while it is still possible to use him for a pep, and I would highly recommend that he is a good option as well, I personally will not use him for a pep solely because Chalmers is more of an endgame esper in a sense that you need him to speed tune your comps and he's mostly used for fast runs. 
But the thing is, a pep is extremely unstable and I cannot do without a Jacob, so I definitely still need the Jacob in that spot. Now the second place that he really excels in is definitely going to be the cute miracle because the enemies have a whole ton of HP. So what you realize is he is exceptional when used beside Su Hua, so I will show you exactly why this is the case. Now as you can see, Su Hua's second skill has an invincibility buff, so you can actually use it to preempt him for his third skill. So for example, over here he now has an invincibility buff and he's going to be able to drop his third skill without losing any HP. So that is one way that you can manage his survivability, especially since he loses a lot of HP, which which can potentially put him in the eye of the enemies. Now with that said, you don't necessarily need to use Su Hua, you can also use Febreze. So Febreze's third skill also grants invincibility to one ally and his second skill also buffs attack and gives your ally a turn. So in that sense, if your Febreze can lap your Charmers one time, he can use his third skill to grant Charmers an invincibility buff and then lap him and use his second skill to push Charmers AP and attack up. So that is another combo but you're going to need to have a very fast Febreze. Now let's say your Chalmers is low on HP, another Esper that really works very well with him is going to be Clara. Now Clara's first skill is smart enough to detect who has the lowest HP and then heal that ally based on her own max HP. So Clara is going to be an exceptional choice when used beside Chalmers as well, like for example in Cube Miracles and obviously the Temporal Tower. But you know who is a better choice? So the new Esper Armored is going to be exceptionally useful when used beside Charmers. Now the thing about Armored is his skills is not smart enough to detect who is your DPS Esper. So the only Espers that can directly attract his healing is going to be Espers who sack their own HP. So for example Taylor, for example Charmers, and I can't think of any others right now. But I'm pretty sure that Armored is going to be exceptionally strong when used with Charmers. So if you do pull Armored in the upcoming banner, keep Charmers on your radar. Now let's take a look at the last place which has exceptionally high HP on the enemies. So like I spoiled earlier, yes we are going to be taking a look at the Temporal Tower. This is exactly where you know the enemies have a ton of HP and this is also where Chalmers find himself very useful. So the thing is, it is extremely important for you to protect him so you might need to have like a whole bunch of Aspers that can grant invincibility, that has single target heals, that has every aspect of making Chalmers a better DPS. So essentially your entire team needs to revolve around him to make sure that he has a lot of damage and a lot of survivability. But when all works as intended, he is going to be very nutty. So over here we are on floor 40 where the enemies have a ton of HP, but we are still able to one-shot them. So we just did 71,000 damage, which in most cases is probably going to one-shot any enemy in the temporal tower, save for like the boss floor. So that's basically it. This is the showcase for Chalmers. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something new. He is obviously not very, very difficult to build. He just needs a lot of crit rate and a lot of crit damage. Basically just, you know, your generic DPS build. So nothing special. You don't need Ocean Waves. You don't need Zeus Relic Sets. You don't need like Avatara and all that. You just need him to have a lot of stat based on like Chronos Relics, right? So he is quite easy to build in my opinion. But hopefully you guys see his value and where he can potentially be quite useful. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, it really helps the channel, and subscribe for more dislike content. Now this has been Daddy Free to Play, and as always, I will see you in the next video.